Man, social media has really changed the world a lot um, because it just puts everything out there. Well, at least everything that somebody wants to be put out there, it puts it out there, both good or bad. Uh, have you ever had a group of friends or family members that you used to chilling with, used to hanging out with, used to being around for so long, maybe even for years, but then all of a sudden you find yourself not around them anymore, but you see them hanging out with somebody else and you see it through <laughs> social media or sometimes you may even see it in person, but you feel left out. You feel like you, you're missing them. And that's what it seems like is going on with Marcus Peters and the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Marcus Peters is somebody who said he wants to retire Raven. Um, he was somebody that a lot of people expected to be back after his contract expired this offseason. A lot of people expected the Ravens to re-sign him. I was one that expected them to give him the Jimmy Smith treatment to where it's like, all right, we know you were hurt last year. We know you had an up and down last year. But you know what? Go test the market. Go see what's out there. And then, hey, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, come talk to us. Come holler at us. That's what I expected to happen. Then I expected him to do that and then be back. But, no, it hasn't been that way. And the Ravens, when they signed Rocky Scene, it was like, oh, well, this may be the end of Marcus Peters with the Baltimore Ravens. Reason being because Rocky Scene is primarily an outside Corner. Marcus Peters was an outside corner. With Marlon Humphrey, even though he can play inside, he's an outside corner. So you see where this is going. You see where it's headed. The Ravens have their two outside corners. And not that you can't have more, but at the same time, what can we really expect? What should we really expect from Marcus Peters with the Baltimore Ravens? Like, if even if he did return, is he going to take a role as a backup, especially as a cornerback. He may feel like, hey, I still got it. Last year was an anomaly. I was coming off my injury. I wasn't fully mentally ready yet. Physically, I was there, but mentally, I wasn't all the way there yet. So I still want to be a starter. I still can start in the NFL. He may still feel like that in the Ravens. They may not. We don't know because we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But as for now, Marcus Peters is not with the Baltimore Ravens. And he remains a free agent, so we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, yesterday, because you know, y'all know Lamar Jackson. He, he, he loves uh, social media. Um, and he loves posting stuff on social media, especially when he with his guys, when he back in the building. Because QB1 has officially returned. A couple of days ago he was back. But anyway, uh, Lamar Jackson on Instagram, he posted. Uh, he said, it feels great. And use the GR8, the number eight, you get it? It feels great. Anyway, feels great to be back on that grassland. Hashtag trust. And there was some pictures of him from OTAs throwing the football and whatnot. Um, but then if you look at the comment section, if you look in the comment section, Marcus Peters was in there. Hollywood was in there too. But Marcus Peters was in there. And he said, miss my folks. And it was a little sad face with the tear dropping and whatnot. And you can see why. Because Marcus Peters has been, he's been here ever since really Lamar's coming out party. Because remember, Marcus Peters, he came in the middle of uh, the 2019 season. And that was, you know, that was such a special season for Marcus Peters. I was thinking about it last night. Because when he came on that season, he had never lost a regular season game with the Baltimore Ravens. Did not lose not one regular season game with the Baltimore Ravens. Because remember, he, he came... <laughs> He came after that, that Browns game, where Browns just literally ran all over the Ravens. And it was another game, like, either the week before the Browns or the week after that the Ravens lost, too. Because they, they played the, the Cardinals. No, they played the Dolphins week one, Cardinals week two. And then I forget, it was the Browns and somebody else uh, week three and four. And week three and four was the ones that they lost. But after that, they ain't lose again. And then, they, of course, they got Marcus Peters right before that Seahawks game. And he made his impact known from jump. That was so special because he was like, oh, yeah, I played Russell Wilson a couple weeks ago, and I remember what he did on this particular play, and that's how I picked it off. And he took it to the house, and it was a beautiful thing, and Marcus Peters fit right in with the Baltimore Ravens. The attitude that he brought, that, that, that swagger that he brought, and I think that's why so many Ravens fans have been really sad and hurt that Marcus Peters is still out there because of everything that he brought, just the energy that he brought alone. 
Forget the play. The energy alone that he brought. Well, you can't forget the play because he is a cornerback. And yeah, you ain't forget no cornerback play. But what the energy alone that he brought to the Baltimore Ravens, it was special because they needed that. They needed, they needed some, somebody who's nasty on defense. They needed that. I mean, on offense, you can never have enough of those too. But certainly on defense. And that was Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters is going to run his mouth. Marcus Peters is going to get all in your face. Marcus Peters is going to try to tick you off if you are an offensive player. He is going to try to get under your skin. But he's also going to try to make plays too. And we have been so accustomed to Marcus Peters making plays, not last year, because um, again, last year was not not a good year for Marcus Peters. It was just it wasn't a good year, in my opinion. Um, but before then, we had been so used to Marcus Peters making plays, um, and he did make some plays here and there last year. He certainly did. I mean, I think everybody's favorite play from last year that Marcus Peters made uh, was on Sunday Night Football against the the Bengals, where they ran that goofy trick play. And I, you know, I remember I remember that drive, and I remember thinking like, man, it, it's it's gonna be a tough ask. Uh, for the Ravens defense to stop the Bengals. They right here on the goal line. Oh, boy. I, I really hope they do something goofy. I hope they do something silly and it messes them up. And guess what they did? Something goofy, something silly. They did that little end around, reverse, whatever. And they were going to have, um, I think it was Tyler Boyd. I think they were going to have him throw a pass or something. It, so it was something goofy. But Marcus Peters was all over it. And he literally just pushed Tyler Boyd. Pushed him down. Pushed him. Or was it Jamar Chase? No, I think it was Tyler Boyd. But he pushed him down. And then he did his whole little, uh, uh, his, his, his little version of Ray Lewis. I know y'all, I know everybody remembers that play. That's probably everybody's favorite play for Marcus Peters last year. But the thing about it was that uh, those plays, they were far and few uh, last season. And I know for a cornerback, um, it's tough. Because there can be games where the ball is just not coming your way. Um, you may just miss some opportunities. It happens. But a lot of times we saw Marcus Peters out of position. Um, we saw him trailing a lot last year. We, it just, he wasn't himself. Um, so I guess Ravens were like, you know what? We're going to go in a different direction. And they went in a different direction, um, at least for now. But you, you kind of feel like it, it, it's probably over. Kind of feel like that's probably a wrap with the Ravens and Marcus Peters, especially how they've been really like promoting Rock Yassine. They've been really putting him out there. Um, and again, I, I would expect him to be uh, the other opposite outside corner that starts. So with Marcus Peters, the, the only way that I can see him coming back is, yeah, if he were willing to accept a backup role. And that's hard. That's hard. You ain't been a backup your whole career. And now all of a sudden to be a back, oh, that's humbling right there. That would be something. Or, or if there was like an injury or something, then I would expect him back. But other than that, I don't think so anymore. I, I don't think so anymore. Um, but you can feel where Marcus Peters is coming from, missing his guys. Uh, again, because he, he was there since 2019, since so the middle of 2019. And he's been through a lot with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, he was there for um, their first playoff game. Uh, well, no, nah, actually not this first playoff game under Lamar Jackson because he had the playoff game the previous year's rookie year. But he was there for that MVP season. You got to see that in person. He wasn't just an NFL player watching highlights on TV. No, he was actually there. He was a part of it. Um, he got to be there for uh, Lamar Jackson in, in the Ravens' first playoff win in this uh, new era. And it was a special playoff win because it was against the Titans. And, you know, that was like – that was significant back then. That was very, that was personal. <laughs> that was real personal. Um, so he, he got to be a part of a lot of special moments, and he made a lot of special plays. But to, like we talked about earlier, when you're used to being around somebody, especially if you've been around that, that, that person or that group of people for years, and y'all had a great time and whatnot, then all of a sudden you see them still having a great time, but you're not part of it. That can hurt. That can be painful, and, and that can make you feel some type of way, like you're just missing out and like you're just missing them. So I get where uh, Marcus Peters is coming from. So we'll see what happens with him this uh, offseason. We'll see where he ends up landing. Cause I'm sure he's going to end up signing somewhere. Where that's going to be, no clue. But just like Marcus Peters is and probably will be um, from this point on in his, the rest of his career, uh, when it comes to being a member of the Baltimore Ravens, I'm out.